Mike Bond here at American Top Team, standing next to you, PFL fighter, Olympic gold medalist, uh, everything you can ask for and more, two, Kayla. Two-time Olympic gold medalist. Two-time Olympic gold medalist, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kayla Harrison, who is preparing for season two of PFL, the first women's lightweight tournament That's there. Right. Uh, how exciting is this for you, finally getting this tournament, and especially with the news that it's going to be on ESPN Plus? Well, I mean, first of all, being on the world leader in sports is like, it's a huge opportunity for the PFL, for me, for MMA in general. I think. You know, having the UFC and PFL both on this is like, the, the ESPN is sending a message like, hey, we're going to be the number one in MMA and MMA coverage. And I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm, I'm excited to steal the show is what I'm excited to do. And really just like the PFL, you know, they took a chance on me. There's been a lot of comparisons to Ronda. There's been a lot of like, well, she's a judo player, but can she fight? And not only did they take a chance on me and sign me, but they said, listen, we want you to be healthy, we want you to be happy, we want, we want to shatter glass ceilings and we want to create this brand new weight class. Like, that's, you know, you're, when your bosses actually listen to you, like, that makes your job a dream job, you know? Like, I literally get to wake up every day and do what I love and not cut weight and, like, send a positive message and do it in the format that I want to do it in. Like, my life is perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And I mean, the ESPN Plus platform, like you said, does a lot for the sport. I saw Nate and Cholton here walking around with mm -hmm. his million dollar check and everything. I think going into the first season, there was a lot of uh, concern, maybe just unsure how this whole thing would unfold. Uh, obviously, everyone got paid. It worked out well. And now it's you know moving up another level. Uh, how just in the state of PFL, like how good is this for the sport and just for you to be in an organization like this that's clearly has a longer term future than maybe some people thought it would have when it first yeah. started out? Well, first of all, the people who are investing in the PFL and who are behind the PFL are like very serious people who like to win. So I don't think that they would invest their money in a loser or a dud. So when you see people like Tony Robbins or you see people like Kevin Hart or you see people like Ted Leonsis, you know, that's how you know, like, okay, or Don Davis. Like, these people know what they're doing and, and they're smart and they're thinking of it outside the box. Like, they're changing the game. It's not, this, it's not a promotion like it is in boxing, which is kind of what the UFC and what MMA has sort of modeled in the past or like, you know, even like wrestling, like, you know, fake wrestling. I feel like this is, this is a real sport and it has the potential to become an Olympic sport someday and it has the potential, you know, it's very fan friendly, it's very fighter friendly and it's like, listen, you want money, win. You want to be successful, win. And every year you have to put it on the line. That's how this works. There's no favoritism, there's nobody special, there's no, you know, oh, I can't fight this person or I don't want to fight that person. No, like you show up and you have to fight. It's like March Madness, but for fighting, it's awesome. Yeah, and we've come to find out the field, they've kind of, they're slowly rolling out the roster and everything. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the other fighters in the women's lightweight division? Uh, you know, there's big name Sarah Kaufman. I think she stands out among the bunch, yeah. but there's some other ones scattered in there. What do you just make of, you know, your competitors that are going to be out there? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm super excited to test myself against people who are seasoned vets like Sarah. Um, you know, I think a couple uh, organizations or online sort of like polls placed her like ahead of me and I love being the underdog, you know, that's what I've been my whole life. So for me, it's exciting. I feel like I'm really going to have a chance to showcase my skill um, if we both, you know, if she makes it to the finals because I know I'm making it to the finals. Um, I love the fact that every female on the roster has a winning record. I love the fact that we all have really different backgrounds, really different stories. And that's what's so cool about the PFL is it's like, not only do you get to compete and you get to like write your own story, but I think they really want to showcase like every different type, every different walk of life. You know, we have fighters from Germany and Thailand and China and here and like all over the place. So it's pretty cool. I mean, obviously most of the fighters are from ATT because um, they want to be champions, but I don't know. I think it's just such a unique opportunity, especially for the women. And I think we're probably going to steal a show this year. Yeah, it's been a few months since we saw you fight, and obviously for someone so young in your MMA career still, that's a lot of time to improve, progress, see you working on your game here. Uh, how are you going to be a different fighter by the time you step in there on May 9th from the last time we saw you in December? Yeah, you know, I mean, I took three days off, four days off after my fight, and then it was right back to twice a day, pretty much every day. Um, you know, my goal, like I said before, is not to be a judo player in a cage, but to be the best MMA fighter in the world. Um, I think in order to do that, I had to improve a lot on my stand-up. But more than anything, I really had to learn how to relax. So we spent the last three months sparring twice a week, but I'm sparring the amateurs. So like, I'm learning how to relax, I'm learning how to see punches, I'm learning how to move my head and get in safe positions and get to the clinch in, in a way that is positive and not me just like 
diving in like a zombie, you know? Like, I, I think that um, if I fail to grow and I fail to change, and I fail to put myself in those uncomfortable positions, then I will fail inside the cage. If I just go, if I just continue to go to what I'm good at and just rely on that, I'm not gonna be as, as successful as I wanna be. So I, every day I do something I don't wanna do, you know? And that's what's gonna make me be a world champion. Yeah, and the season kicks off May 9th. Uh, when do you know what you know exactly opponent you're gonna have when all that gets locked in? Or maybe you already do. Well, I know, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything. You can tell, no one's watching, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, okay? okay so. PFL, that's my family, okay? Yeah. You don't tell on your family. <laughs> um, no, I think it's going to be a really good first fight. Um, like I said, everyone has a winning record, so uh, it's going to be... It's gonna be fun. Is it safe to say though that the ideal final is Sarah Kaufman? I mean, she's the most experienced, she's the most well-known. I assume that would be the biggest fight. Definitely. I mean, I think uh, she's a huge veteran of the sport. Like long time vet she's a former champion you know she's been in every single promotion she's fought the best of the best she's beaten some of the best and that's gonna be a true test of my skills you know I think a lot of people are like oh she, you're gonna be so much bigger than her and I'm like well I walk around at like 160 it's not like I'm like this monster I think people really think I'm like cutting from 180 pounds or something like no I literally don't cut weight I don't want to I think it's dumb so I'm not a monster but I'm definitely taller than her which will be interesting because I almost never spar or fight people who are shorter than me but yeah it's gonna be if I had to bet money I would say me and Sarah Kaufman but to fight anything can happen so I'm looking forward to seeing the season I'm pumped and I'm just curious on like your motivation too because you it could be what you know six a dozen half a dozen fights in your career and you could have a million dollar check behind you the goal for a lot of these fighters you know make the money get in get out and you could be doing that so early like if you don't want to think too far ahead as you said anything can happen but you have all that money behind you you get all that is it going to be hard to you know keep motivated keep wanting to do this or what like what kind of goals go beyond that I mean I, I was never motivated motivated by money I think when you especially when you come from an Olympic background, like you don't do it to be famous, you don't do it to be rich, you literally do it because you want to stand on top of a podium and have a like an object placed around your neck. Like you want to be known as the best in the world at what you do. So especially in judo, it's like <laughs> nobody in the United States knows what judo is. Like literally nobody. Even MMA players are like, what? is this a judo pro? And I'm like, oh my God. So, you know, I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by I'm not even motivated by anything outside. I'm motivated every day I want to wake up and be the best possible version of myself. And I feel like this is my calling and this is my purpose in life. And it's going to give me this amazing platform to not only internally fulfill my purpose, but also change the world the way that I want to change the world. And that's motivation enough. Like, I want to be the, I want to be the best. That's it. Like, I want people to be like, holy shit, she's a beast. She's a monster. But she's also awesome. <laughs> and I know one of the motivations too was a fight with Cyborg sometime down the road. Uh, yeah. You know, we don't know how realistic that is. She lost and everything. But yeah. is that kind of pushed down the list a little bit for you at this point? I mean, honestly, for me, like, I was always Cyborg because she was this, like, unbeatable kind of, like, mythical creature, you know? And everyone always, you know, Ronda always ran from that fight. And I wanted people to know, like, no, I'm running to that fight. Like, that's what I want. I want to kill the, the giant. I want to slay. And, um, you know, I knew that I moved down here a month after I came and trained with Amanda because I was like, listen, you want to be the best, you need to train with the best. So I knew that that was a possibility and I knew that she was beatable. I thought that she was beatable before Amanda beat her. And I think now I don't use that as motivation. I'm just chasing legacy. You know, I'm just chasing the best Kayla. I'm not chasing anybody or anything. I just want to be the best Kayla.